How's everybody today? Blessed and highly favored. Yes. We're also blessed and highly flavored. And we're blessed and highly favored because we have a choice. Amen? Amen. God gives us the power to choose. If you're miserable, stay home. Don't tell nobody you know Jesus. Get in your closet till you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Get refreshed, rejoice, and don't get refreshed. Just stay refreshed. And then you can go out and tell somebody about Jesus because nobody wants to hear about Jesus if you're miserable. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's why God requires. He says, don't forsake to assemble. Amen. 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 You know, we need to abide not only in his word, in prayer, but praise and worship and assembling. It's important. One of the things the enemy wants to do is break any one of those things and separate us so he can feed you deception. How many of you know Satan's greatest weapon is deception? His power is fear. Hello? But praise God, he's in us is greater than he's in the world. If you know that. Hallelujah. Well, I want to welcome everyone this morning to Sunday Morning Live. <laughs> Did you get touched this morning? He ain't done, you know. Bunch of demons just ran out of here. But I can tell you they're waiting for you when you get out there. So you got to make sure you got your sword out when you go... <laughs> You got to kick butt. Amen. Amen. <laughs> How many of y'all know we're in the last days? Amen. <laughs> if you don't, you know now, right? We are in the last days. We're in the last minutes. There's all kinds of stuff going on. There's a fight not only between the, the powers of darkness, but the powers of light, but between the left and the right. Hello. You know, the word says something about the left. It says they're going to be the goats. And the ones on the right are going to be the sheep. It's pretty amazing in how that all flows, doesn't it? It's amazing to me in how all of these things just flow. And we can see what's going on right now. There's so much division. Amen? Amen. Everybody see what's going on in the government? Isn't it incredible? I mean, demons are just coming out. They don't even care. People's faces are contorting. All kinds of things are going on. You watch them in the news. <laughs> I mean, there's so much hatred. Amen? There's so much hatred. It's incredible. And they have no idea what's happening. They just, they just, and then whatever someone says, they have no, nobody's seeking God to ask for an answer. They're just following a deceptive crowd. And that's why the word says very specifically, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added. Amen? So we need to stop going to the phone and start hitting the throne. Amen? The phone isn't going to give you the right answer. Usually it's going to tell you, go to the throne, hopefully. Would you turn to the book of Luke this morning? Glory. And we're going to need, we need this anointing right now because the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and what? Destroy. And people are getting easily deceived. Even believers are easily deceived. In the book of Luke in chapter 2 and verse 41... It says in verse 41, and when Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. And so when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple. I mean, come on, no coincidence, three days, hello? Then they found him. He was going to be missing for three days later, right? Here he is, 12. But he'll be missing three days when he's older. And it says now, and, and, we're, and they found him after three days, and and they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard them were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? I want you to grab hold of something because she took it personal. 
Everybody see that? Look, your father and I saw you anxiously. Why, why did you do this to us? And Jesus said to him, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. They did later. In other words, I'm going to share something vitally important before we can talk about this anointing that is so needed now. We need to erase the word religion. The word religion means bondage. We are not religious. We are from an eternal kingdom. And we are sent into this realm to fulfill a mission. This is a military operation, not a religious operation. Jesus is known as Lord of the host, meaning Lord of the army. And this is not a Bible study. This is a training session with a manual from the eternal realm. Amen. This is what we're about. Why? Because we are warriors. And let me tell you, if you're not in a battle, you will become a casualty. That's just the way it is. That's why people backslide. That's why, because they don't fight. Wouldn't you rather strike first than be struck? Amen. Come on, that takes common sense. But it's just amazing where believers, so-called believers, in fact, let's clear something up. You know what belief means? To follow. So if you say you're a believer, but you ain't following, then you ain't a believer. In fact, God calls you a liar. Amen? So we want to come out of the lion realm. We want to walk in the glory realm. And in that, let me tell you, all of these things are going to be exposed and are being exposed now. Jesus not only went into the temple and kicked over tables, but he's kicking over tables. He's still doing it. He's exposing the garbage in our lives. He's exposing the garbage in our homes. He's exposing everything right now. And either we're going to get in line or we're left behind. Hello? So in this kingdom business, Jesus came. He said, behold, the kingdom of God is upon you. See, he, it's not personal in the kingdom business. It's kingdom business. So when you get rebuked, don't take it personal. You know why people get offended? Because they take it personal. In fact, they're still alive. The word says that we're supposed to be dead. I never saw a dead man complain. Amen. Grumble. Curse or lust. He was dead. And that's what we're supposed to be. That's why Jesus gave us the formula. Deny yourself. Then you can pick up the cross. And when you, again, if you pick up the cross, what does it turn into? Hello. So you're going to pick up your sword because you can't follow unless you fight. And if you're not a fighter, excuse the expression, you're a wimp. Hello. We are called. Let me, let's clarify this here. We are called to battle. Everybody say, my call is battle. My, call is battle. my purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. My is to Satan's and my destiny is to infiltrate the world system. My is to infiltrate the world system. With the talents and abilities, the talents and abilities God, has God has anointed me with. To rescue his children. Rescue. Amen. And the lost. Amen. Lost, L-O-S-T, living outside of salvation's truth. Lost. That's why they're lost, because they're not living inside salvation's truth. They're living outside of salvation's truth. So we must be about our father's business. That means kingdom business. It's not personal. Amen? So when we're rebuked, we're chastised. When we sin, we get up and repent. Hello? But we're not allowed, we shouldn't have sin dominion over us. It doesn't mean you're not going to make a mistake. Hammer falls on your foot, you may say something you regretted. Amen? You run into something, oh, snap. So you need to start changing the language. Instead of holy whatever, say holy shift. Why? Because you're shifting. Man, I'm shifting holy. Does everybody get it? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Come on. We need to learn to walk in kingdom and stay about kingdom business. It isn't personal. It's about an operation sanctified by God Almighty. And, we got, and we're part of it. We're in it. We're to be his hands, his feet, his mouth, his sword. Yeah. Amen. We're to be everything. He, he paid the price for me and you. He made the exchange on the cross, didn't he? Amen. So in this, we got to come to a place. Jesus was a steward of fulfilling stewardship 
by doing kingdom business. He was a steward, wasn't he? Why? Because he took everything that dad gave him. Amen? Who He was dad himself. And he was fulfilling. Jesus never came to fulfill his will. He came to fulfill the will of the Father. Amen? So if he came to fulfill the will of the Father, then he was about the Father's business, known as kingdom business. Amen? Not personal business. And there is an anointing that God is releasing for stewardship because too many people think that they own things. And it's, it's terrible. You and I don't own anything. Amen? Everything that I'm wearing right now is loaned. Not that I, somebody else might wear it, I don't know. But when I leave here, I don't take it with me when I go home. Amen? So in Luke 2, 41, what we're talking about here is that there's an area where Jesus came. The parents were looking for him. And it, what did he say? And he said, what? What's, what's the problem? Don't take it personal, but they took him. Why did you do this to us? How many times have people said, oh, God, why did you allow this to happen? He said, I didn't. You did. You did. The Bible says, make no place for the devil. Why did you make place for the devil? I didn't come and steal it. I didn't come and get you addicted. I didn't come and got you sick. That wasn't me. Amen? And what does he say? My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of seeing spiritually. In John chapter 2. Book of John. Oh, glory. You were telling me, you getting this? We're just getting started. Glory. Did you bring a lunch? It's okay, you just got fed. We just <laughs> see we get it catered every Sunday. Glory to God. Comes right from the throne room of God. See the angels come from his throne room with the fresh presence on them. And when they come in here, man, they just get released. And then we get a fresh presence. We get drunk. Every believer ought to be drunk in the spirit. Amen. Amen. People used to go and pay to get drunk. And of course, there was consequences. <laughs> Hung over. Divorce. <laughs> you know, all those things. Now, Jesus said, come on, I got some real stuff for you. Amen. Fresh wine. <laughs> Amen. Do you know why everybody wants to feel good? I love getting high. I was an addict for 20 years. The problem was it was a counterfeit dope. It was all dope. That's why I got dopey. Amen. It was a counterfeit high. We came from the greatest high you could ever come from. That's why people want to feel good. That's why people go out and get high. They're trying to cover their problems. Why? Because you and I came from the throne room of God. We came from the eternal presence of God. We want to feel good. Amen? Amen? We want to feel great. Man, I was in a jail ministering one day, and I said, man, I love getting high. The officer looked at me and said, what's this guy doing in here? <laughs> then I explained why I, lo I love God's presence. See, you can read the word, but you meet the word in his presence. There's a difference. See, there's a difference between religion and relationship. I love the word of God, but man, the apostles didn't have the Bible. You know, they had the presence. And that's what God is restoring right now, the presence. It's called the anointing. That's what he's restoring more and more and more. But people, you know, in the Western world, it's different, man. It's more entertainment. There's not enough worship. It's who's what and where. Who cares? I want to know where Jesus is. Amen? <laughs> and John chapter 2 and verse 13. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? It says in verse 13, would you read it with me? Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand and the, Jesus went up to Jerusalem and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep, doves and money changers doing business. Doing what? Was it daddy's business? No, it was self-business in the temple. When he had made a what? Oh, uh, <laughs> no, Jesus was no wimp. I mean, come on. He made a whip. 
He made a whip of cords. And what did he do? He drove them all out of the temple. And when, with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the what? Tables. And what did he say? To those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of what? Merchandise. Okay, so this is, again, Jesus was about kingdom business. He still is about kingdom business. The devil comes and brings self-business and tries to bring division in the body. Is everybody okay? Amen. Amen. So it's not personal business. In other words, our per anything that's been our personal business needs to be turned over to kingdom business. It no longer should be personal business. You and I don't own anything. And we need to come out of this arena of thought and attitude. And you and I don't deserve anything. Hello? Everything that's been given is a gift. He gave himself. You got everything. Him. Him. There's the handout. It's, it's, you know, Jesus came. The Bible says, seek his face, not his hand. But I'm telling you, things are crazy and upside down right now. And of course, it's, you know, many of this is promoted because we have a demonic ruling system right now. Of course, it's been there. It's just been deceived. But it's coming right out of the closet. Vote for the one that gives you whatever. How about the one that can change the country? How many of y'all never Knezer was called a servant of God? Hello? How many of y'all know what feast is next? Thank you. Feast of who? I mean trumpet. I mean feast of what? Trumpets. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Of all the things. Why? We're getting ready to get out of here, aren't we? We're getting ready to get out of here. That's the next feast coming. The Feast of Trumpets. Okay. Luke 16. Glory. We don't even need any politicians that are ruled by one world order. Because that's what's happening. And people are blinded to it. They have no idea. Because they can't see spiritually. Oh, hallelujah. Today is a good day to die. Amen. Luke 16. Is everybody there? <laughs> In verse 1, please. Let's read this together. And he also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an, uh, an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. Hello? He was wasting his goods. You know, we got to ask ourselves, am I wasting his goods? So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I, I, I'm ashamed to beg. Oh, ashamed to beg. Sounds like he was pretty prideful. I have resolved what I to do. I'm going to commit sin. Watch. That when I put out, when, when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and write 50. Hello. Was he stealing from his master? Yes. Was he lying? Yes. But that's all he was looking for was himself. See, it was no longer about the master's business. He got involved in the business of self because he'd probably been skimming off the top anyways. And then he said to another, and how much do you owe? And he said, well, I owe 100 measures of wheat. He said, no problem. Take your bill and write 80. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. But he dealt shrewdly thinking he had collected that part of the money. Does everybody get that? He just had him change it. In other words, this is what you owe. Well, you owed this before. Now you only owe this. Good job. You're still out of here. 
For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their, in this, in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends of yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Hello. And that ain't heaven. He who is faithful is what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you trust in the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. It's amazing how money dictates people's lives. <laughs> or feelings dictate people's lives. People that are dictated by their feelings are the most dangerous people. You, need a, you and I got to get to a place and position under the anointing of stewardship that nothing moves us except for truth. Amen? Nothing. In Psalm 127. Remember, this is kingdom business. Psalm 127 and verse 1, would you read it with me? Is everybody there? Yeah. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Whoa. Now listen. If, so there's an area you and I are laboring unto the Lord, and we allow the Lord to build the house, not us. If we're allowing him to build it. That means that there must be acknowledgement in everything with him and everything you do. Again, I, I, I reference this all the time because King David, how many of y'all know he made mistakes? Even when he was a peeping David, amen? He made mistakes. And he went through a lot of trials. He caused a lot of problems because of his mistakes because much is given, much is required. But there was something about David that God acknowledged. He said there was a man after God's heart. It's a man after God's heart. Amen? And there's something that David said. He said, I always put the Lord before me. That's called relationship. So in everything that you do, every decision, even when you vote, if the Lord's not in front of you, then there's no relationship. You can't just put God in front of you when you feel like and move him away when you don't. He ain't moved, I'm going to tell you right now. We can't do that. So if we'll always keep him in front of us, we make, we are accountable to him all the time. That's called relationship. It's amazing people do things behind closed doors. Nobody sees me. Where's the relationship? Where, where, where's God in this? I've been a believer 30 years. Yes. Still watching pornography. Still using dope. Still smoking. Still drinking. Still lying, still stealing. That's wrong. It doesn't mean you're bad. It means you're deceived. Amen? And we go into jail all the time. You know, we got a captive audience, praise God. And it's, and it's an opportunity. Jail is a place of rescue. It's not a place of punishment. Amen. One of the things I share with them, I tell them, man, everyone say, I'm not bad. And they'll say, I'm not bad. They don't get it yet. Because they're in jail. So they believe that they're in jail because they're bad, but I'm telling you, they're in jail because they got deceived. Not because they're bad. Hallelujah. So unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. In other words, unless the Lord's building a house, we're building it ourselves. First John chapter 2. Oh, glory. First John chapter 2. In verse 15. Is everybody there? Let's speak this together, please. 
Do not love the what? The world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Would you say that again? But he who does the will of God abides forever. Would you say it one more time? But he who does the will of God abides forever. So don't you think we need power of the Holy Spirit to abide, to do the will of God? Because you can't do it in your own strength. Amen? Now go to the next verse 18. Here we go. Are you ready? Little children, it is the last hour. And if you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know what? All things. So if you're truly walking in the Spirit and under the anointing, you know. You know. Listen, you can sense when the demons are coming. You can sense when, when temptation is coming. You know, because you're walking in the Spirit. Now, let me share something with you. There's no such thing as blind faith. I hear that all. Why well, stepped on a blind faith? Well, you're an idiot. Because there ain't no such thing as blind faith. You're deceived. Look, when God speaks, you know what happens? You see. When He speaks, you see, then you do. That's called faith. You don't see, you don't do. Hello? And when you don't know what to do, you don't do nothing. You wait. Amen. It's real simple. See, but the enemy likes to press with fear. Man, you got to do this. You got to do that. And if you don't make that decision today, you're going to blow up. No, you won't. Hello? Remember, the Holy Spirit leads, the devil pushes. And sometimes it's real gentle. Hey, man, why don't you do this? Hey, do this. No, do we got to turn it around and slap them. Get rid of them. Amen. It's the voice of the stranger. So there's an anointing where we know all things. It is called a steward anointing. It's called a steward anointing. It's in the second chamber of the tabernacle. Actually, that anointing is also known as priesthood. See, the first chamber, that there's three chambers in the tabernacle. The first one is called salvation. It's called you're welcome. Come on in. Okay, now let's get to the next chamber. That's why. Okay, so everything around the tabernacle is outer court, which we call outer darkness. Now there's two outer darknesses. There's the world, which is outer darkness, known as Babylon, Egypt. And then you have hell. So the only way home, that's why Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, because he was the eternal port. Amen? So the uh, safest place, of course... So you go through the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. So you want to hang out in the most holy place. Amen. But in the holy place where you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you speak in another language, your scales come off of your eyes, you are different. This is not denominational. Hello. This is truth. See, but how can you interpret the word of God if you ain't got the spirit? You can interpret it by traditions handed down from men. Everybody must have their own revelation. Amen. You must seek out yourself. And I'll tell you, if you seek him, you'll find him. Amen. If you're truly serious about finding out about what's up, who he is, yeah, you'll find him. And when you find him, you'll never want to let go. Because when you taste heaven, you don't want to taste anything else. Everything else is bitter. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, 1 John chapter, I mean, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So in this steward anointing, we understand that you and I don't own anything. So we know this. Amen? We know this. And we sense the enemy coming to try to steal, kill, and destroy under this anointing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, in verse 16. First Corinthians nine sixteen. 
Is everybody there? For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, I have been entrusted with what? Stewardship. In other words, there's an area where an individual is anointed to become a steward. He's doing it willfully. A person that's just doing it ain't anointed for it. And you know what he's going to do? Cheat. Lie. Scam. He won't be a full steward of God's money, possessions, or anything. He won't recognize. When he goes and buys something, he said, that's mine. Now, you know, sometimes, even though you know, in other words, we have a witness car. And people say, well, man, where did, well, man look, because it's got Christ the King on it and so forth. Man, I want to label everything with his name. And people come up and say, man, whose car is it? I say, well, it's the Lord's, but he lets me drive it. <laughs> but there's some people that just don't get it. You know, it's like, so you just go, yeah, it's mine, but forget it. You know, you don't get it. <laughs> You'd be there, huh? Because, see, they can't, they don't, they, remember, kingdom business has another language. And the world doesn't understand your language. If they do, I'd check myself out. Find out what's going on. Amen? So we got to understand here now, there's being a willingness, and that's with the anointing. And unwillingness is, means the persons do it in their flesh, in their own strength. There are people who are preaching the gospel in their own strength. Hello? What did Jesus say? He said, look, many are going to come before me and say, Lord, I cast out devils. I did this, I did that, I did... And he said, I don't know you. What do you mean you don't know me? Well, you practice lawlessness. In other words, you used my name and my goods for your gain. Not for my gain. There's a difference. And he said... And you ain't entering my home. Depart from me. I don't know you. You know how many people are going to be pretty frustrated? Listen, this is a time right now, it's critical, critical that we lay down our life, our agendas, our will, and begin to pick up his. Underneath this stewardship, this anointing that God is releasing. You're not in here by coincidence today. He's placing that anointing on you so you can either leave with it or reject it. 1 Corinthians 4. Here's the confirmation of what I'm sharing with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. This is it. Are you ready? Are you there? Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ. Now, let me share with you. The word Christ means anointed one. So we are servants to the anointing. When you are servant to the anointing, he releases the things where you become stewards to the things of God. Does everybody get it? Now, because look at the next thing. It says, you are servants to the anointing. Now, let me explain the anointing. It is the eternal presence, power, power. And truth of God Almighty, all wrapped up in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we are servants to the anointing, the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. And we are stewards of the mysteries of God. Well, that's because he's releasing these things to me and you. So we are to be handling his things and realize that everything that we get no matter where it comes from, is from him. He is the source. Everything else is a resource. Even when you get something from a, a resource, it's still coming from the source. Of course, you got to be careful. You might get something from the wrong source. But through the anointing, you'll discern what source is there. And if you don't, then you, bring, then you touch unclean things or you bring accursed items in your home and stuff to that degree. Is everybody all right? Okay, let's go a little further. Verse 2. Would you read it with me? Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. That means full of faith, able to see. But with me, it is very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. 
For I know nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the what? Lord. Now again, there are those... I, this may sound kind of crazy to you, but I'm going to use a terminology. There's a difference between saved and born again. It's a position. And it's associated. Everything revolves around the tabernacle of God. When you are truly born again, he's Lord. Other than that, you're still in a saved position, saved state of being. In other words, you're still doing for you, but you're calling Jesus Lord. But you actually, he's just Savior. When he's Lord, he's Lord over your health over your finances, over your decisions, over everything. He's Lord over it. Why? Because you look to him for everything. That's called Lord. If he isn't that in your life, then he's not Lord. He's just your Savior. But I'm telling you, the anointing is going to be released today. You allow him to become your Lord. Amen? Oh, glory. In Proverbs chapter 3, So every decision you make, you look to him, no matter what it is. Proverbs chapter 3. You know, when you have a relationship with the Lord... He's no longer God. Not that he's not God. He's dead. See, because in the relationship, it becomes father-child. That's relationship. If he's still, oh, God, you're afraid he's going to bop you on the head or something or take something from you, then that's not relationship. That's religion. He wants you to get to a place where he's your dad. And it, it doesn't mean that we're disrespectful. I mean, there's times when I get in simple little arguments with him. Oh, come on. What do you mean by this? I mean, he'll tell me to go do something. I'll go do it. Well, what happened? He'll tell me, shut up and wait a minute. Hello, this was relationship. He's my dad. I respect him. In fact, the fear of the Lord is called respect, honor, and reverence. That's called the fear of the Lord. See, so if you don't have the fear of the Lord, there's no respect, honor, and reverence. That means there's no relationship. Because only through the fear of the Lord is there a relationship. So if he's my dad and he's your dad, then you're going to talk to him like a dad. You know, you mind if I take the car out tonight? You know? <laughs> Can I borrow a few bucks? <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, come on. He's your dad. What do you think? You think I ought to wear this? Every morning when I go, what should I wear today? Oh, the way I dress sometimes, people think, man, God didn't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the moments I forget to ask them, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 3. <laughs> Hallelujah. My wife will say this. Are you going out like that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 5. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Is everybody there? What does it say? Come on, speak of what we're going to sow. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you what? Become. Okay. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Oh, God help us. In all of your ways, what? Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. In all of your ways, all of your ways, whatever you're going to do, whatever decision, always ask. Acknowledge him. Holy Spirit. In fact, every morning you get up, you should invite the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. You don't have to say good morning, America. America ain't going to rescue you. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, angels of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why? What am I? You're acknowledging heaven. You're acknowledging home. You're already making connection. 
See, acknowledgement brings connection. When you acknowledge, you bring connection. Something's getting ready to come. You don't know when or how. That's all you're doing is connecting. It's like picking up the phone. Hello? Amen? So when you make that connection, then what happens? things begin to happen. And dad waits every morning. He's waiting for you to wake up. Oh, I can't wait till he wakes up. <laughs> He's excited. He's waiting for you to get up. Oh, they're awake. <gasps> Can you imagine when he gets all excited waiting for you to call him in the morning and you just get up and go out, make a cup of coffee, eat breakfast, and go out to work? What the heck? <laughs> and then he'll try and get on the front of your car. Hello, I'm here. Are you going to acknowledge me yet? My car breaks down. Oh, God, help me. Oh, man, if you had called on me before, we wouldn't have had this breakdown. Hello? Kingdom business. Proverbs 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will what? Direct your path. Don't be wise in your own eyes, homie. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Depart from yourself. It will be what? Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of all of your increase. Why? So your barns can be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Those are things, not alcohol, okay? That's why he's saying, acknowledge me. See, the word tells us to present our spirit, soul, and body as a living sacrifice. We need to present our spirit, soul, and body, flesh, and possessions as a living sacrifice. You know, people believe because of the Western culture that tithes, which is 10%, they give 10% to God and the rest they can do whatever they want. That's not true. God owns it all. We don't own anything. We're just supposed to be stewards. And when the stewardship of anointing is there, you understand that. This ain't mine. This isn't mine. This isn't mine. Nothing is ours. We are stewards of his possessions. Does everybody understand it? It's not just 10%. Oh, I got to give 10% to God, and then, and then I can do whatever I want. No, it's all his. That's stewardship. Amen? That's reality. You and I don't own anything. Is everybody okay? Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. And in verse 1, Ezekiel 28 and verse 1, it says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take, uh, say to the prince of Tyra, thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up and you say, I am a God. I sit in the seat of gods, in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not a God, though you set your heart is the heart of a God. Now he's talking about Lucifer. With your, with your, um, be, before, behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver into your treasures. By your great wisdom in trade, you have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. At first, Lucifer was about God's business and it became about his own business. Does everybody understand that? Uh, go to verse 11, verse 12. It says, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord, you are the seal of perfection. Who is he talking about? Lucifer. Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty, you were in need in the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, sardius, topaz, diamond, braille, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Why? Because he was a praise and worship leader of the universe. God breathed through Lucifer. That's why music affects people tremendously. In fact, let me tell you, the technology 
is causing many individuals to fall now. Many. I can't tell you how many kids are being taken out by their phones. They'll live and die and go to prison for that phone. Hello? In verse 14, he said, you were the anointed cherub. In other words, he was the anointed praise and worshiper. He was the anointed steward of God's business, being about the kingdom of business, but he wanted to exalt himself. He said, I established you. You're on the holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you out your profane thing out of the mountain of God and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Listen, people are acting just like Lucifer. False stewards. When we say no to God, we put, put ourselves as God. If I'm not going to acknowledge him in, every, in, in my decisions, then I'm becoming God. Does everybody get this? You don't think God sees these things? Listen, we may have been blind to it and, and stupid of this, but now it's time to become real about this. It's time to be able to see this. You and I are to be an extension of his hands, his feet, his word, his love, his presence, and his glory, and his possessions. Amen? Would you turn to the book of John for me in chapter 16? The book of John in chapter 16. Is everybody okay? True anointing of a steward is always about God's business, not about self-business. In John 16, in verse 12, would you speak it with me? Jesus said to him, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. And the reason why they couldn't bear them yet is because they hadn't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They wouldn't be able to understand or comprehend. Then he explains, he says, but however, when he, the Spirit of truth, who's known as the Holy Spirit, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. That's the anointing. He will glorify me, and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I have said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Under the anointing. Does everybody understand it? This is the anointing that's speaking here, and this is the anointing that's speaking here. Not a man. The anointing teaches, not men. When men teaches, changes don't come. But the anointing breaks the yoke and changes come. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Would you go there? I want to close. I got about 40 more scriptures. We'll be all right. I'm only kidding. Oh, my God. Lock the door. <laughs> We're going to get a Holy Ghost anointing today. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Well, what does it say? But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of what? Themselves. Amen. Listen, it's increasing. You're finding preachers fall, evangelists fall, pastors fall, all kinds of things. They're getting caught up in money and lust. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money is the second thing there. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, self, without self-control. That means without control over the old man. And that's not your spouse or your boyfriend. That's your old man. Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of what? Godliness or stewardship, but denying its power. There's a form of stewardship. Now Janice, always, what are they doing? Amen. For this sort are those who what? Creep into households and ministries and make captives 
uh, of gullible men and women loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts. They're always learning, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They acknowledge themselves and what they have as they're in their position. Oh, God's blessed me with all this. I get people telling me, yeah, the Lord blessed me with this car. Man, it's great car. Praise God. Payments are 8000 a month. That wasn't God's blessing. The devil, look at it's, this is not keeping up with, they say, the member of the Jones is keeping up with, this is not, this is not competition in the kingdom. This is kingdom business. Kingdom business got nothing to do with competition. Everybody has specific gifts and, 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 and the anointing that God has placed on us to serve the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty so that we are good stewards of what he gives us. Amen? We don't own anything. Everything he gives, you give. It's pretty amazing to me that everything is charged. Boom, boom, boom. And, and don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to come off in the wrong way, but man, I get stuff. You know, you got to buy everything. We take donations. I mean, the only thing that we charge for is somebody wants specific packages because it costs us for the package. But other than that, they can download anything free on the website. It's all there. Everything you hear, everything that's here is free. It's all God's, not mine, not this ministry's. We give out free prayer booklets. And if you had those penetrating prayer booklets, if you didn't get one, make sure you get one. Those are free. Why? So. The more you sow, the more you sow, the more you sow, the more you sow, you get to sow what? It don't matter. Why? Because you're not about self-business. You're about kingdom business. And when you're about kingdom business, it's not personal. It's not personal. Look at Jesus did to Peter. Peter came up and said, Lord, because what did he tell me? I got to go die for you. I'm going to rise from the dead. I'm going to do this. I got to go into the city. And Peter gets in front of him and said, Lord, you can't do that. What did Jesus say to him? Get behind me, Satan. It's like, man, what what I do to you? You're not considering kingdom business. You're considering men business. Does everybody get this? Glory. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Second Timothy 2. While we're in Timothy section. In verse 21. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 21. Let's read it together. Therefore, if anyone what? Cleanses himself from the ladder. Well, how do you cleanse yourself from the ladder? You repent. Amen? He will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. That should be our desire. If that desire isn't there, there's something not right. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? pure heart. So you better be careful of your associations. Associations bring impartations. Listen, in the kingdom of God, we have no friends. They're my brothers and sisters. Why? Because friends will turn on you. Even Jesus called Judas friend. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife, and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps, uh, perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive to do the will of the devil, and not the will of God. Amen? Not the will of God. Colossians chapter 1. And then one more scripture. What does the word tell us? In the latter days, many would fall from the faith, taking heed of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Well, doctrine of demon is not the gospel. It's a false doctrine. And there's plenty of it out there. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 26, or 24. 
Are you learning something today? Praise be to God. I love when the anointing teaches. See, I'm getting taught just with you. Verse 24, would you read it with me? I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. Listen, sufferings are not being crucified. Sufferings are associated with constantly denying yourself. Does everybody get it? You're putting kingdom business first, not you, or self-business. In fact, if you own a business, you need to turn it over to the Lord. You need to dedicate it to the Lord. Everything. Finances, everything. Lord, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. If you're in debt, give them it. Why? And come against the spirit of debt. Bind that thing and get it out. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To his saints. Listen, there's, there's an area where the Lord says, without revelation, we, we let go of restraints. So revelations from him encourage us all the time. There's illuminations and revelations. And I want to close at 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the loss of men, but for the will of God. Have we reached that place? Amen. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you don't run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. So you're going to be persecuted. Amen. It says, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Verse 7, read it with me. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be what? Serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable. What? To one another without what? Grumbling. Grumbling. As each one has received the gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Amen. Steward anointing. Steward anointing. Now, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We want to prepare our hearts for communion. And you may bring whatever God tells you to bring up. But in the meantime, would you stand? So I want to pray the anointing. Father, let the anointing for good stewardship, for pure stewards, for honest stewards to be upon your people today. I pray that anointing not only rest upon them, but abide in them and through them. Again, through this anointing that they will see, that they will hear, that they will receive, and that they will obey. And every area, putting you before them in everything they do. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God.